Honda advised that oil changes are done every 12,500 miles or every 12 months. Frequent oil changes is one of the cheapest ways to maintain the internal health of the engine. Step 1. Warm up that engine. So I'm going to take the Honda around Landry and Dodwells again and out into the countryside a bit. So I'm going to go over this crossing, which I think they're going to remove that now. Um, past this farm and on to a bit of off-roading. Some mild off-roading. Get that stick out of the way. Don't want any punctures. Let's see if it can cope with some puddles. Look at these puddles. This is testing the 4x4 capabilities. And back on the road. So we're back home now. So that oil is nice and hot. Now that the engine is hot and the oil nicely thinned and runny, we can take the car into the garage for the oil change. Although we need the oil hot so that it's thin and runny, it will be dangerously hot. So don't rush too quickly to get the oil out, as it will be over 80 degrees, which could burn bare skin. Other than a trolley jack and axle stands, you will need the following for the Honda CRV. 17mm socket for the sump, oil catch pan that can hold 10 litres or more, a torque wrench to torque 45 newton meters, an oil filter removal tool or one of those 14 flute tools, oil filter, 5.3 litres of 5W40 quality synthetic oil and some disposable gloves. So I'm going to be using a quality 5W40 fully synthetic oil. And then we need the breaker bar for the sump plug, which is 17 millimetres. We need the filter, and I'm going to be using a Wix WL7134. And there's a couple of tools you can use for removing these. You've got the fluted type, like so. And one that I like is the Facom, which is your snap it on and it locks on. It's a favourite of mine that one. So we will also need a torque wrench to torque 45 newton meters to put the sump plug back on. And it's always worth using a pair of gloves because dirty oil is not good for your skin. And don't forget your catch pan and remember to put the used oil at the local recycling. Now to jack the Honda CRV up and place on the all important axle stands. So here's a photo showing where the head of the trolley jack should be placed. So once you make sure that the head of the trolley jack is on the strengthened part of the seal, which is just behind the front wheel, we can then start jacking up one side of the car. I then need to go round and do the same on the other side. And gradually I do this to bring the car up to the height that I require. Sadly I don't have enough space in the front of the garage to use one jack. Always make safe the car by using axle stands. It's always worth using axle stands. You never know with a hydraulic jack whether it might suddenly just fail on you. So. Sometimes even eye protection might be useful, especially when going underneath a wet car. You get water in your eye. Splat. Nice one. So yeah, pop your axle stands underneath and just drop your jacks back down. So the car's safe. You can always leave the jacks there as well, so you've got extra protection. Now to drain the old oil. Place an oil catch pan under the drain plug and use a 17mm socket to remove. So here's a photo showing the oil sump and the 17mm drain plug. So pop your oil catch pan underneath the drain plug, like so, and using your 17mm socket and breaker bar, just remove that sump plug. Note the aluminium washer that's on there because that acts as a seal. Maybe copper, but in this case it's aluminium. So try and push the plug in as you undo it until you get to the last thread 
and then pull away quickly. So you leave that to drain for a good few minutes. Go and have a cup of tea or something. Certainly looks dirty. There we are, that's all out now. We can now replace the sump plug and also replace the washer with a new one as they compress to seal. Use a 17mm socket on a torque wrench and tighten to 45 newton meters. So when you replace the sump plug you should replace this soft aluminium or maybe it's a copper washer because that's actually part of the seal. So just pop that back in with your new washer and then we can torque that to 45 newton meters. Make sure it's going the right way. And there's our click. Now to remove the oil filter, which is located on the back of the engine near the timing chain side. Use a 14 flute SW64 cup tool or a suitable filter remover. So it's in quite an awkward position, right at the back of the engine, above the steering rack, as you can see. So, and there's also the main subframe straight underneath it. So oil is likely to drip down onto the subframe. Um, so it can be a bit of a messy job. So you definitely want some sort of container underneath to catch any of the oil as it comes out and some suitable rags. So it can be quite tight. I had to have another go at that again with the tool just to give it a little bit more of a turn. Now it should be loose. There we are, now that's free to come off. This is a genuine Honda one by the look of it, um, which is good because it obviously had full Honda service history. So that does at least tally with that. So you can see the oil now coming out. So make sure you actually try and catch that oil and mop up wherever it lands. Now don't forget, as the filter comes off, make sure that the seal comes off with it and that the filter seal doesn't stay in place on the back of the engine because that could cause it to be a double seal and then you can have an oil leak later on. I'm probably going to open this filter up since it's had a new head gasket. So I'm just going to mark the car on the filter so I don't get it confused with other filters that I have. So we can now take our new oil filter and there's our black seal on there and we just pop a bit of engine oil on that to help that seal and tighten up nicely. Now while I'm at it I'm just going to check the old filter because like I said you need to just confirm that the old seal came off and looking at that there's the old seal I don't think that one actually could come off that's quite a quality filter that. Now spin the new filter back on once the filter contacts the engine, you can then tighten by three quarters of a turn. Honda filters may have the numbers 1 to 4 on. This helps as you can tighten by the three numbers required. If you see a 1, then tighten until you see 4, for example. So I'm just going to pop the filter back on now. So it is quite a tight squeeze. So it's best if you haven't got oily hands here so you can actually tighten it by that three quarters of a turn. Don't forget that used oil is very bad for the environment, so best pour the old oil back into a container to take to the local recycling centre. Just as a precaution, because this is the oil change after doing a head gasket, I want to inspect the pan afterwards to see if there's anything untoward in there. Thankfully there wasn't, which is good news. I normally use now an old brush just to sweep all the rest of the oil into that container so I can take it to local recycling. Now to refill with nice clean oil. 
Honda advise premium detergent oil and recommends the following oils depending on the ambient temperature. So now we can take the filler cap off. Advisable to use a funnel. And if you also hold the bottle sideways, you allow the air back into the bottle so it doesn't blub 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 so much, which can cause some of the oil to blob over the engine. So we get all that in there now. So it's about 5.3 litres. So I will need to top up a little bit more. There we are. And just give all that a quick wipe and pop the filler cap back on. Now start the engine and ensure the oil pressure light goes out on the dash. This procedure should refill the oil filter so we can check the oil lever accurately. So we can just start the engine, ensure that the red oil pressure light goes out on the dash. Give it a little few seconds so that oil filter fills up and then we can turn the engine off. Always do this in a well ventilated area. Wait at least 10 minutes for the oil to resettle back into the sump before checking on the final oil level. So now to check that the oil level. So we remove the dipstick, give it a wipe so it's nice and clean and dry, pop it back in. Now the reading should be accurate. So if we bring that out, on here it's done by two little holes in the actual dipstick. The top hole is the maximum fill level and this is spot on. So we can pop the dipstick back in now and note the mileage. Here's a close up of that dipstick showing the two holes with the top hole being maximum. Lastly make a note of the mileage for the service record. So in my case 110,874 miles. Not a necessity and certainly not advised as you could cut yourself very badly by doing this but I would like to check the inside of this particular filter as I had just done a head gasket replacement. Opening the paper pleats can indicate any internal issues with the engine if lots of metal particles are found inside. So I tried to minimise the risks here because I know that sharp metal can leave a really nasty cut as I found out with an exhaust gasket. So anyway, so I'm using my big Rothenberger pipe cutters here and trying to keep my hands well away from where that metal's going to be cut. And anyway, so we spun this round until the top part popped off. Or should I say the base plate. The base plate's the part that connects the actual filter to the engine. So here we go, base paints just about to drop on the floor. And the little rubber seal that just came out then was the anti drain back valve. So I'm being very cautious, taking the filter element out, and there'll be a little spring in there, which is for the bypass valve, which is at the bottom of the filter. So a little bit of oil still in. And there's that spring. So I now need to open the actual element up itself. It certainly seems a quality product. And that's little rubber there is the anti drain back valve. Normally made of silicon or something. So I just need to pop these two ends off. So that was the bypass valve just there. So we've nearly done it. Still a bit worried about cutting myself. And then we pull this perforated support tube from the centre. So now we've just got the filter on its own. I'm going to get rid of all those bits of metal for fear of cutting myself again. So we can now spread these pleats apart and inspect for any metal particles. 
Thankfully, there doesn't seem to be any. So remember that the dirty oil comes in from the outside of the filter, goes through this material and through to the center core and then back around the engine. But anyway, so that's all looking good, which is quite reassuring. Here are some detailed photographs with labels to help with identifying all the visible parts. I will put them on for only 4 seconds each, with the idea that you can pause them for detailed viewing. Thank you for watching and hope this helped other home mechanics out.